It has been over a year in the planning, and that is bringing the Chiefs' kingdom to Deutschland. The Chiefs are in Frankfurt, Germany, to play the Miami Dolphins. A special Defending the Kingdom podcast coming your way. The Chiefs' kingdom now has a navy. Yes, we have our own uh, USS champion ship, if you will, in the Main River here in the middle of Frankfurt, Germany. This Defending the Kingdom brought to you by Ticketmaster. And it does come to you from here on the second deck of the champion ship here. This is so exciting. A VIP event is going on behind us, uh, Matt. The public has been involved in uh, the lower deck, and they've been up on the top deck. But it's been amazing so far as the folks in Germany have been so awesome in welcoming the Chiefs Kingdom. It's just been fun so far. Yeah, this is a super cool idea because the river runs right through the city. And the ship, you can't miss it. Like when we were flying in, it's just this big bright red ship that you could see from the sky. And, uh, and when you're walking around Frankfurt, it kind of just draws people in. There's merchandise sales right outside of here. And anyone can come on this ship, and there's all these cool things that you can do. It's kind of like uh, if you go to training camp, there's all the fun training camp stuff, like the lockers and uh, photo stations, stuff like that. It's very similar uh, here, but there's a lot of – Chiefs fans that are stopping by, but also just Germans who are trying to figure out what's going on, and they're by de facto becoming Chiefs fans because they think this is so interesting. So and, and really e cool experience. And examples of that, we were doing some uh, piece uh, for the franchise, and met Chiefs. These are Chiefs fans now from Dresden, Stuttgart. Uh, let's see, Berlin. They were here. Uh, so pe people from all over the uh, the the and Norway. So not just the German Chiefs fans of the kingdom but also of Western Europe and even the Scandinavian countries. This has been awesome. So our around the world, yeah. we're living our around the world right now. Well, I have some for you right now if okay, you want to go over. Go, yeah. Want, yeah, so uh, we have Chris. We met Chris at the hotel yeah. yesterday. <laughs> uh, we also met Phil and Nicole at the hotel, big Chiefs fans. Met Matt from Joplin at the hotel while we were waiting for our ride. Then I had a chance to walk around Frankfurt a little bit today. I went to like the main square where there's the NFL experience, which is really cool. It's kind of like a mini Super Bowl experience. Uh, there's fans wearing every kind of jersey you can ever imagine just walking around. I met Rosie. She came up and introduced herself. She's a huge Chiefs fan, uh, lives in Bavaria, but made the two-hour drive to go to the game tomorrow and to experience the weekend here in Frankfurt. And I also met Alex in the main the square. If you look at our YouTube page, we do a thing called Kingdom Convo, and Mitch and I's face are both on it. And he walks up and shows me the picture. He's like, are you this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's me. Uh, so shout out to you, Alex. Also had a chance to meet some amazing people yesterday who gave us some fun gifts. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got this Berlin Thunder T-shirt. Very cool. Back from the NFL yep. E days. Berlin Thunder. And it's, all, it's the European League of Football. Yeah. So Berlin Thunder T-shirt. And the amazing people at the uh, – Germany national soccer team headquarters where the Chiefs were practicing mm -hmm. gave us this awesome German national team jersey. Mitch and I each got these. So they're really spoiling us here. It's been just an amazing experience meeting all these people. They're so excited that not just football, but Chiefs football is being brought to them. And it makes them feel seen and special. And you can just see the excitement on their faces. And it's, it's fun to be a part of it. I want the German national team to come to Kansas City when we host the World Cup, and you and I are going to wear yeah. our jerseys <laughs> and go crazy uh, yelling for the German team unless they're going against the U.S. team. Of course. Uh, it, and then we have to mention last night at dinner, and your folks were so great uh, in hosting us, but I wish we could. I wish we got the name of the waitress who was so <laughs> uh, so interested. She wanted to go to the game so badly, right? The tickets are at such a high premium. She's like, "You go, you have tickets, you know." But it was so uh, a building that's 500 years old. The schnitzel was yeah, wunderbar, <laughs> wunderbar, uh, and maybe a bit of a brew. But it was uh, it was terrific to experience uh, some of the cuisine of. Uh, my home country and uh so it was awesome it was so cool like mitch said we went to this 500 year old restaurant it was so like just classic german like nothing has changed in hundreds of years had an incredible meal but you could tell people started kind of noticing that mitch was sitting there and someone who must have been from kansas city told our waitress who didn't know much english at all who mitch was and she walks over and she goes touchdown kansas city yeah <laughs> And then she drops so down. Great. 
I, I had a beer. Okay. She drops it down and she goes, nectar, sweet nectar. <laughs> yeah. I go, oh, okay. Who's her in homework? here? Somebody set her up here. But it was fun. And yeah. the food was amazing. Uh, the city's amazing. This country's amazing. It's just great to be here as the Chiefs will play the Dolphins here in Deutschland. And this boat, we mentioned it, but there's all kinds of events going on. So some of it's open to the public, some's VIP. Uh, but, but this boat, I said now the Chiefs Kingdom has a navy, a dream that you see, and a lot of work has been put into this trip for the Chiefs to come here. But when you see this, you realize it, it's, it's just for real, the impact that this franchise is having beyond the shores of the states. One example of that, I was here earlier today. I helped host a uh, brunch for flag football players that are near Wiesbaden, which is a small town about half an hour from here. There's a U.S. Army garrison there. So a lot of the kids that are on these flag football teams are American kids and their parents are service members, but also a lot of German kids or uh, people from other European countries that are stationed there because of NATO reasons. So truly a hodgepodge of nationalities and people from all over the place were at this brunch. And it's so cool because football is bringing them all together. And Dante Hall was there. Christian Okoye was there. I hosted a Q&A with them. And the, the kids could ask those players questions about advice that they have for young players or what their favorite memories were from their playing days. Just so, so cool. And that's just one small example of the many things going on here. It's much more than just the game tomorrow. Yeah. It's an opportunity to share football with the world. And this is going to make people choose fans for life. And it's just very exciting. And what's very apparent, and we've talked about this before on, on past podcasts, the German people love American football. 88 million Germans, but fully 25% of them are as into the American National Football League as any of the fans in the States. We saw it yesterday. 150 media showed up. It was like a Super Bowl That's feeling. crazy. As far as when we had the uh, media gathering at the practice facility at the German national uh, team. But they just love American football. They can't get enough. They would love – if this, they'd sell out games every week if they had them here. But the Chiefs, to me, are at the forefront of winning over the hearts of a lot of those German uh, American football fans. So it's been awesome to see it. You know, I was asked about memories of past international trips. And this is where I'm going to circle back to all this is going on. Uh, but it does come back to the football game. Because they go, what do you remember about the U.K. in 2015? I go, it was a great experience. We were at Kensington Palace for an amazing dinner. Um, and But the fact that that Chiefs win started a – was in the middle or started basically or the second of a 10-game winning streak that was historic at the time. It led the Chiefs to their first playoff victory in 21 seasons. That 10-game winning streak to win a playoff game had never happened in NFL history. It Basically, the genesis of that was in the U.K., then you go to the game in Mexico City in 2019. The Chiefs were struggling. Remember, we lost to the Titans. We were, we were kind of gasping for air. They beat the Chargers. The Chiefs beat the Chargers in Mexico City and then took off and never lost again to win Super Bowl 54. So now it comes back, all the trappings of all this in this wonderful nation, but it comes back to the Chiefs and Dolphins. And what could this game lead to? And honestly, Matt, we could argue this is the biggest game the NFL has had to date on its calendar. Sure, and it's kind of funny. We've talked about how what a great time that we're having and all the fun stuff to do, but you're right. At the end of the day, the team is here for a reason. It's a business trip, and that's how they're treating it. And we can talk maybe a little bit about what our day was like yesterday because yeah. we were on the team charter. We landed here, went to the hotel for maybe well, Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go. We leave at 7 o'clock <laughs> yeah. Thursday night, right, at 1,900 hours, and then you're in the air. We were in the air about eight and a half hours. Yep. And all of a sudden, poof, it's Friday morning. Uh huh. What happened to Thursday night? I know, right? Right. It's kind of like one big mega day is kind of how we described it. But we landed here. Uh, the guys had about an hour at the hotel. Then we went to practice. And I'll say this, the energy at practice was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, the guys were energized. They were super into it. Uh, and they're happy to be here, but they also know why they're here. And they have a kind of a just an attitude to them right now of we're here to take care of business. Very exciting to see if you're a Chiefs fan. And the media was nuts, like you alluded to. I mean, hundreds of media members from all over Europe, all over the world, uh, to cover practice and to cover the media session. It was like the Super Bowl. That's what it was like. Uh, but the important thing for the players is that they don't get wrapped up in all of that. And I didn't get the sense at all that they were being wrapped up in it. Quite to the opposite, they have a certain attitude about them that is very encouraging about the game tomorrow for sure. And this morning, saw them after breakfast. They were right into meetings, right back to the uh, same practice spot to do a walkthrough, a mock game, they call it. 
Andy Reid, there's so much different science. This will be, this will be, you'll see off-season studies of this. Every team that has an international game approaches it different ways. The Dolphins, frankly, and Mike McDaniel approached it differently than Coach. But this has worked for Coach in the past. But you're always wondering, what would that practice be like? Because these guys only got an hour in the hotel, basically. And then they had meetings. and then they, but, but there was a bounce in their step. And it was this kind of Friday night lights feeling at that facility and the music that they play usually <laughs> when they're in team period. Just there was a bounce to them. And then this morning when I saw them, it was they were all business. I mean, they're ready, to, locked in and ready to go. But this game has a lot of importance. These are the top two teams. There's this gaggle of six and two teams, right, in the AFC. But these are the two teams that have the best conference records. This game is monumental. Yeah, I mean, what a treat for these international fans. I don't know if anyone could have expected that the game would have this significance at this point in the year. But this is one of the biggest midseason matchups of the year. Look at what their Chiefs are right now. They're 6-2. and two. Right now, if the season ended today, the Chiefs would be the number one seed in the AFC. But the Dolphins are right there at 6-2. and two. And it's two teams that kind of have had a, a different path the past couple of years, right? The Chiefs are trying to remain as that number one team, trying to cement uh, what has been a dynasty here over the last several years. The Dolphins are trying to establish themselves as a contender. They want to be among the best teams in the, in the AFC. And we've talked about it previously. I mean, the Dolphins have absolutely throttled uh, the six teams that they've beaten. I guess the five teams they've beaten. They've played the Patriots twice. Uh, the teams that have losing records, though, right? Those are their six wins. They've played two games against teams with winning records, lost both of those games. This is a motivated Miami team that wants to prove that they belong in the upper echelon of the AFC. And conversely, for the Chiefs, they want to remain the number one seed in the AFC and keep this thing going for as long as possible. So it's a great matchup here in Germany and a lot on the line for both teams. To your point, there's two empirical pieces here to this game that accentuates what you just said. One this is the first time in the history of the International Series, the National Football League, that two teams will meet that are four games above 500. It's never happened. So you have two six and two teams meeting in a big game. We've laid that out. But for the Dolphins, the last time they beat a team with a winning record when they played them was week three of 2022. So there's almost like there's been this footnote to this Dolphin team, which has been they're on a record-setting pace in many ways offensively, is the fact that, well, until you beat one of the contenders, you're not a contender. That's why this game is a larger meaning for the Dolphins. You just pointed it out. But when you look at the numbers in it, you realize, oh, wow, this is a big deal for the Dolphins if they can win this game. Because they've lived for 20 years in the shadows of the Patriots, right, in the AFC East. And then, oh, wait a minute, that, that cloud started to lift, and here come the Bills. Well, now the Dolphins are saying we belong in that discussion as well as the overall AFC discussion with the Bills, Bengals, and Chiefs. That's what this game means to the Miami Dolphins. And so the Chiefs, um, of course, if the Chiefs can win this one, they set themselves up for a possible run to try to get that one seed again. Yeah, being 7-2 and two going into the bye would be a great oh. feeling, wouldn't it? There's nothing better than winning going into the bye. And really, when you think about it, Right now, where the Chiefs are is where they want to be. You want to be 6-2 and two with an opportunity to beat a team like the Dolphins and then go into the bye week feeling really great about the second half of your season. And really, I mean, you think about last week, a bummer of a game for many reasons, right? The Chiefs want to move on from that. They want to flush that one because that was not Chiefs football. They'd be the first to tell you that. I have some fun numbers for you that might make people feel really good about this one, though. Patrick Mahomes doesn't lose often. We all know that, right? He's 14-3, and three, though, following a loss in his career. So whenever he loses, he almost right away bounces back. Uh, and when the offense has scored fewer than 20 points in Patrick's career, also doesn't happen very often, only happened nine times in the regular season in the Patrick Mahomes era, they've gone on to score an average of 31 points the following week. Now, those numbers are all about past performance. That doesn't guarantee anything moving forward. But what it illustrates is Patrick Mahomes has the mentality that when things do not go well, he is able to learn from it and flush it right away at the same time. And that's a very hard thing to do. Many teams, those things will linger or they don't learn from it. That's not Patrick. And one thing I loved from Coach Nagy uh, earlier this week, he said that on Monday morning, Patrick Mahomes was the first guy to get in there, and he was ready to go. Like Monday morning couldn't get there soon enough because he wanted to get better. And when you have a player of his caliber that can see a performance like what the Chiefs did on Sunday and say, all right, what can we learn from it and let's move on, that's a championship mentality. And I know they're excited to show what they learned from it, and they're excited to move on from it here on Sunday. 
Yeah, we glossed over on the previous podcast a little bit about the explosiveness of the Miami offense, the fact quick strike drives. They have 73 points on drives that are four plays or less. The next closest team in the league is San Francisco with 35. That's ridiculous when you look at that. But this game, big for the Dolphins and the fact can they prove they can beat a contender, but same with Tua Tungavailoa. He's 5-8 and eight against teams that have winning records when he plays them. And Tua's had an amazing season. He's on a record pace, too. And we know what Tyreek Hill's doing, right? The old chief for six years. Uh, but he's on pace to have the best year of any receiver in NFL history. But this is a big game, too, for Tua Tungavaloa. And that seg- segues into the Chiefs' defense because they know it's way more than Tyreek Hill. You can go back and watch the previous podcast about the explosive run game of the Miami Dolphins. It's the most overlooked stat uh, for the Dolphin offense this year. But this Chiefs defense has a chance to be disruptive. Even if they can't sack to a, they can affect plays uh, in the first very fraction of a second of a uh, offensive start by the Miami Dolphins. That's a really good point because this Dolphins offense is super rhythm based. They're a quick strike kind of offense, and not just with big plays, but just getting the football out quickly. If you look at average time to throw. Tua Tagovailoa has the fastest average time to throw in the NFL. He's only in the pocket, on average, 2.28 seconds before the ball is gone. So that's why he's the least pressured quarterback in the NFL, because there's simply not enough time, usually, for the pass rush to get there, because by the time they do, the football is already gone. 62% of Tua's passes this season, he's gotten rid of in less than 2.5 seconds. And if you look at pro football focus metrics, when he gets rid of the football quickly, they have him as the best quarterback in the NFL this year. So how do you stop a player in an offense like that? You disrupt that rhythm. You get your hands up. You bat a pass down. Sounds very obvious, but you cover his first read. You don't let that first read be open because that forces him to move to the next one, and now he's held onto the ball a tick longer, and then Chris Jones is in his lap, right? So that's how you beat this offense. You have to get them off rhythm, and you can't allow the big plays. This offense has uh, the most plays of 20 or more yards in the NFL this year with 46. Half of those are on first down. You can't let that happen. You can't let them be in rhythm, getting chunk plays on first down, because then you're playing the game on their terms. Look at Buffalo. Look at Philadelphia, the teams that beat this Miami team and contained their offense. They did not allow Miami to play the game on their terms. It was played on the other team's terms. That's the goal for Kansas City on Sunday. Yeah, this is a Miami offensive line that doesn't allow a lot of pressures or sacks, much like the Chiefs are number one in the league in disallowing sacks, only giving up 10 but a lot of it has to do with Tua's release time and it falls out of there. But affect the, even if you don't bat down the pass, this has been my thesis all week long, affect the aerodynamics of the throw, yeah. which you can do uh, with Tua Tonga Vailoa. And we'll close out this way, just with the Chiefs offense in what they need to do to stay on schedule. Uh, this is a game where they have to stay on schedule. This is one where almost the script is flipped a bit, where it would be great for the Chiefs to have seven, seven and a half minute drive and then get touchdowns when they get down to the red zone. This is a Miami defense that's star-studded. This is a defense that has Bradley Chubb on it. Xavier Howard will probably play. Jalen Ramsey's on this team, among others. Uh, They can pressure the quarterback. I think they're underrated. They're getting fully healthy. But you can stay on schedule and score on this team. But the Chiefs have to just kind of tighten it up a bit, like the drop passes or the three and outs those become even more dangerous against a team like Miami. Absolutely. The Chiefs can't beat themselves in this one. The Chiefs, in a lot of ways, beat themselves in that Broncos game. That's not taking anything away from Denver. Denver beat the Chiefs, but the Chiefs didn't help themselves with turnovers and going 0 for 3 in the red zone, 3 for 10 on third down. That's not Chiefs football. The Chiefs right now are the number four total offense in the NFL. That's in terms of total yards. So they are racking up the fourth most yards per game in the NFL. And if you look at the Denver game, they were even moving the ball in that game. The issue, turnovers and not finishing in the red zone. So it's encouraging in a sense because this team can move the football. If they're going three and out every other drive, that would be really concerning because they can't move the ball. They can move the ball. They just can't turn the ball over. They have to finish in the red zone. They have to finish these drives with touchdowns, uh, and they can't punt on these opportunities that they have when they move down the field. So that's the key for Kansas City, and it, it's an obvious one, right? But we know they can move the football. We know they have the players to do it. Just got to finish and cannot make mistakes that end up beating yourself. And as we close, we want to give a big shout-out to all the people inside the fort that have worked on this trip 
again, for over a year, and there have been many. But the infrastructure of the Kansas City Chiefs, both on the football side and the business side, is very strong. And you see it uh, come to fruition when you have a Super Bowl experience on multiple occasions, but when you do a trip like this, including the people that we work with every day, right? Our 65 TPT crew uh, has been amazing. But uh, the experience will be made best if the Chiefs beat the Miami Dolphins in this game. So here we go, Matt. Here Let's we go. get this done. What, what a cool opportunity, right? Yep. And the cherry on top of all of it, the reason that we're here, let's get a win on Sunday. And get ready, NFL. We're going to be playing an international game every year in this league. <laughs> yep. It's sooner than later. And I think we'll be in Germany again sometime, maybe <laughs> soon. Anyway, he's Matt McMullen, senior team reporter. I'm Mitch Holtis, voice of the Chiefs. And, yes, let's go get a win. So, bis and schuss.